It's March the 23rd, 2024. I'm Chris, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Look who's back. Hello. Adrian. Hello. <laughs> back from the uh, shopping wars. Yeah. Uh, back. back. Yes. Yeah. So, sorry I've missed the last couple of shows. I, I do miss the shows. I, I listen to them when I'm not there. It's like, it, it's, I, I miss you guys. That's a we good sign. Fun. We had some fun. We, we did, we did. We have fun without you. Hmm? No, you're Think supposed to it. say we miss you too, right? That's we how did. this oh, works. Oh, right, right. It's like right, a reciprocal yes. thing, right? <laughs> we, would have had, we would have had more fun with you. But yes. with oh, you. bless you. That's so kind of you to say so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, one reason you weren't around last week was that you had uh, important things going on at the photography show. Or the, yeah. or is it, what's the official title of it now? It's the photography and video show? And it is these days, yeah. It has been for the last three or four shows, I think. Although over the years, they all merge into one, of course. So it might be 10 years ago, I, I couldn't tell you. But uh, yeah, they, 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 they started, they realized they had loads and loads of video stuff going on. Um, and uh, it was like a big section of the show. So they, they renamed it. But people just still call it the photo show. Nobody ever calls it the photography and video show. So is it okay? So so Germany has lost its Fotokina, which mm -hmm. used to be on every four years, which is a weird kind of frequency, uh, at least in these days. Um, but at one point, it might have been the right uh, frequency. Uh, how about the photography show? Is that like changing over time? Is it shrinking? Is it growing? Is it is it morphing into something else over time? It's it's growing actually. Um, cool. it, it, it's uh, it, it was it, it's every year. Um, uh, although the last one was about eighteen months ago, because where, when COVID kicked in, they they had to miss one and they scheduled one out of the normal window they normally have it. They they put one in the autumn instead of the springtime and stuff like that. So, but it's it's come back to springtime now. Uh, and it takes up two decent sized exhibition halls in the the what's no, what we call the, the National Exhibition Centre here in Birmingham in the UK. Uh, and uh, it's a big event and uh, and the place was packed. I mean, so we're talking about a convention centre here that has 20 odd exhibition floors. Right. Um, so we were next door to Arnold Sports World. A lot of bodybuilders. Um, yeah. Oh, so uh, so uh, so there are multiple exhibitions going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. There used to be years ago. We used to always be on the same weekend as Comic Con, which was brilliant because you put a load of photographers in a building with a load of people Perfect. who love having their photograph taken, and that was awesome. You'd like people just everywhere doing like impromptu photo shoots. So are, year, are there? Have there what, been lots of photo shoots with muscly people? this year not so much i don't think i think uh, you know uh you know not not to 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 comment about what your average photographer looks like but you know bodybuilders could possibly be a little intimidating to some of us at least <laughs> i'm sure they're all very friendly people though by the way did you see i mean i probably should have this as a pick of the week but i i've noticed that there is a new show it may not be available in europe yet but i think it's a nat geo i i will post it next week it's about to drop and it's called photographer i think it it is a, Ooh, no, I haven't a, seen that a series a documentary series probably very very well done well produced on photographers so we should i'll, well, I'll, I'll uh, look at that one. do yeah. a little uh digging and post it as a pick next week surprise mm. yeah that's no, cool i uh, know well i did see so no no photography tv show but lots of lots and lots of photographers of of all different types and sizes and in fact actually one of the things i've got three items for us um yeah i could have picked a thousand right there's so much stuff to see for from great uh talks and presentations yeah exhibitions of work technical demos product demos yeah all, all sorts of stuff going on uh but i've picked three and uh yeah it, it's a uh, well, should we dive right in? Should we just sure, sure. Go, go ahead. For it? Okay, go ahead. Cool. So the first one is a camera-oriented one, right? So, and and this was uh, really good fun. I think we've we've talked before about the the Canon VR lens when it was a prototype, and if you imagine just a normal mirrorless digital camera, but with two eyes instead of one, 
but they would they, so it is it's a, a dual fisheye lens uh that then records two circular images to the single sensor in the normal mirrorless camera and do you know what format it shoots in well uh, it's, to, it shoots to, onto the yeah. regular sensor but is so, it yeah, so onto, uh, what i'm saying is the stereo of it is it mpo um I words. haven't a clue. Sorry, and um, this was the, the, uh, the there wasn't so much data about that. I mean, we may may be available online, but um, the, the, <laughs> the, the way, exciting uh, thing, Adrian, the hidden question behind my question is: Oh, can I look at it on my Apple Vision Pro? I'm pretty sure you ah. can. Because so that's a really interesting thing. So, well, this is they had the demo, and this was the the important thing. This was the the fun bit of it, right? I put, I dropped a couple of photos in our um, in our TFOP photo album. What one of the camera lens? Although there's there's links in the show notes as well, um, you know, to 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 the actual product pages on the Canon website. Um, but the fun thing was we got to actually try it to put the headsets on and see what it was like. Um, so that was interesting. Headsets they they weren't Vision Pro headsets. Um, uh, I don't know what brand of headset they were, to be honest. Um, Canon, but uh, um, do they make their own? Do they? I'm not sure. That no, they but do. I, I, I've heard. I'm, I'm trying to bring up the photos. Um, I can see uh, Meta Quest Three. So is that what it is? Is it the is white that, one I, I, with the? I sh- yeah. Yes, it was That's definitely a, a sort of white or off-white colored one. Maybe they were white, and by the time I got to them, they were off-white. Because there were, you know, there were half a dozen of them on the stand, and they were plugged in, and you could literally just wander up and put them on, and and it would play the Canon VR, and it was really interesting. So, so what you saw was was video, um, and it was it wasn't a, like a computer interface like the Vision Pro or anything like that. It was just a video playing as as the demo, uh, but it was um, very much a stereoscopic image, uh, and you could move your head around, uh, you know, with the he- with the the headset on, and it would you know do the the same. It would move your, your your what you were looking at and things like that in in the in the demo video. Um, it was about hemispherical, so if you turn too far, you could see the black edges of it, which it makes sense. I think that the lens is is something like a dual five millimeter fisheye or something like that, but but it's not the type of lens that can look behind itself so you you get about a hemisphere of uh of, of vision and it was really quite useful um it was in the sense that useful is possibly not the right best word but it was quite re- it was shot of a it was shot in a gym and it was of a, it was of a martial arts in, instruction session that that and so there was sort of kicking and punching of uh, of uh uh, the student and the, and then the, uh, the the master or the sensei or the instructor, you know, wandering around, you know, sort of, you know, saying, "No, do this, do that," and um, and you look around. It was very, uh, it was very three D. Oh, there you go. There, there's a photo Chris is showing of of, of what it actually looked like um, in the uh, You know, pe- people sat down on the ex- on the on the exhibition stand with the headsets on. Are they are Would they you... meta headsets? Looks like meta quests, yeah. Can I, can I ask you, do you think that Canon, uh, and this is in the context of the show, uh, felt extremely relevant, slightly relevant, or irrelevant in terms of the big picture of camera manufacturers? So, re- okay, so Canon have, and always do at this show, have by far the biggest amount of floor space, and they bring lots of stuff so they bring cameras and they bring everything from consumer point and shoots right the way through their professional gear they bring lots of printers including the really big stuff that do require a lot of show floor space they have their own theater space for presentations uh cps canon professional services have a desk there and you can get your cameras looked after and and stuff like that um so very much a a a big presence very relevant um if the subtext of your question is, uh, are they majoring on things like cinema and stuff like that? Then, then not so much. Um, I mean, there's stuff there. I mean, you know, you know the, they had their, you know, they had some of their uh, movie or cinema cameras, or you know, that, that you know, on, on the exhibition stand as well. Slightly well, certainly, that, though. certainly but, from kind of a, a prosumer point of view, their printing technology is probably the best at this point in terms of inks printers and i'm you know i'm including obviously hp but to a lesser extent um epson 
Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with, with, um, I guess, customer relations and technical support of which Epson has fallen <laughs> down the stairs, but Canon has really, really pumped it up. And, um, you know, uh, you know, I've been, I'm in the hunt for a new printer and have been speaking to some people, uh, who have a lot of insider information about both Canon and Epson. And there's a consensus about Epson that I feel, um, in terms of my old print, you know, my old printers. Uh, but Canon always comes out as like number one. This is interesting. This is the best. Yeah. Interesting. So that certainly there was, I mean, there were lots of st staff around from Canon to talk you through the printers and demonstrate things. And, and they always have a couple of the really big, you know, format yeah. printers running. So you can see what it's like. Um, uh, Epson, there was a lot of Epson presence there as well. Um, in fact, Ep Epson had their own stand. I mean, nowhere near as big as Canon, but they, they, they were focused on the printing side. Um, but there were also several Epson re resellers there um, who had Epson printers. But then they also had, um, there were other, I um, uh, can't remember what they're called now. There's a company that makes the um, uh, die sublimation printers at sort of up to A4 size. The, 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 there were several resellers for them as well. Um, but no, Canon, Canon did feel relevant. Um, Nikon also had a big stand. Uh, Sony had a big stand. Um, neither of them were as big as the Canon one. Um, but yeah, but the, uh, Fuji had a, a big stand uh, that that covered all of the uh, the the X series cameras. This is the APS-C series. They had all, all of the the GFX, the medium format ones. Uh, they always have a special Instax area um, uh, as well. And stuff like your so, favorite, so, your favorite yeah. area. I do like the Instas. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Well, um, did how 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 big was their their thing about the X one hundred six? Because that very, is really well. May, maybe they don't need to drum up anything about it because um, I've seen this camera hit a real nerve. I've, I've so many people I hear from who ordered it who are waiting for it, and it's hard to get. And and it's it's this same. is one of these YOLO cameras. You have to have it. Same, apparently yeah. it's so the, uh it looks very similar to all the others which I guess is the point yeah. um in part um i think that the magic with this release is on the inside isn't it rather than the outside different from what i've heard and, and read oh and um, and, the, and the and the version before was really hard to get so i think yes. people are, are now trying to get their foot in the door uh, indeed, and they've moved the manufacturer to China now, so it's no longer made in Japan. It's made in China now. Um, so, that, and I think part in part that's to try and address the the scaling yep. of, of production. Um, so, uh, no, it was on the bench. I mean, I, I guess you guys know what these yeah big 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 logos, lots of lots of pictures, and then you have a, a a long bench with the advisors on one side and the consumers on the other, and you can go and pick up the cameras and play with them and and stuff like that. And every all, all the helpers are very helpful and knowledgeable about the product. And the X100 was just sat, you know, along the bench, you know, um, al along with all the other cameras. So they weren't doing a lot special for it for a launch. Um, but, uh, but you know, lo loads of good stuff, loads of good stuff. And the Canon stuff was, you know, was, was big and impressive. Did and Canon, speaking well. of Canon, did they have their, um, did they speak about or show us anything about their uh, satellite in space? Because... They just recently launched their second satellite into space with Canon cameras on board, shooting not pictures of the Earth. No, not that I saw. Not really. Okay. No, it was it. It was a pretty. I mean, it, it's a pretty product focused. Yeah, stand, I, I, I would right? guess so, so. That that space thing is, I think, more of a look what we can do. They don't kind sell of thing. a lot of those. You, I, I don't think yeah. you will be buying a, a Canon satellite anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. There was there was a lot of um, there's a lot of sales of of cameras and lenses and stuff like that on the shuffle. So m the biggest retailers in the UK all had, apart from one actually, all had um, you know decent sized stands and tons and tons of stock. Um, lots of good show deals on every absolutely everything. You know, Who are the um, big retailers? Is Jessup still around? Jessup's went bankrupt a few years back yeah. um, and had to shut most of their high street stores. There are still one or two around, um, uh, but they're, they're smaller. Now, they're, they're, they're po possibly the biggest one, I think, uh, these days is called Warehouse Express, um, which, which um, it has been opening lots of retail stores in the last few years. They, 
they started out with just one store um, in one part of the country, not in a major city. Uh, and uh, but they got they they were one of the ones that got really big as the online store, the big online store in the UK. And they've since opened stores in several of the big cities. So you know, retail's making a comeback for camera shops. Uh, another big one uh, which has been around forever is called London Camera Exchange. Um, yeah, which is a is a great one for used gear as well as for, for new. Uh, who's the other Camera World? Who who are a, a decent sized one, well, not quite as big as the others, but decent sized. They were there. Um, so yeah, and everybody had a ton of stock and was selling. I even bought something myself. I bought myself a new lens. Oh no! What is it? That is the Fuji ten to twenty four, uh, and it's the Mark II version of that lens, which has um, uh, stabilize. No, I think the old one had stabilization. This one is weather sealed, though. So ten to twenty four, equivalent of a fifteen to thirty six on a full frame camera, um, and it f4 all the way through um which is of course plenty fast enough these days with uh yeah for most most use cases um given how how good the sensors are these days um and it's a lens i've been after for ages and with my fuji kit i've been trying to slowly not replace necessarily although i'm happy to replace lenses but just to get to a point where the whole kit is weather sealed so you can go out for a walk in the rain or by the beach and stuff like that and not worry too much about it all because almost all of my lenses are, are not weather sealed, so it's a UK kind of, friendly setup. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. so it's this. I mean, you can see here for those who are watching the video. I hold it in front of my face. So this is the Fuji XT3, which is my my main Fuji camera currently, a couple of generations old, of course, but still doing me so, but very well with a battery grip and the new ten to twenty four lens on it, which was two hundred pounds off at the show. Uh, there we go. There you go. Yeah. Should have bought two. <coughs> ten. Stereo. And, and, and recreate <laughs> that 10 and stereo lens it's kind it. of thing. Just add a little mirror and an adapter. Yeah. And so, there. no, it was, it was good to see. There were loads of really good things to, to see, like from, from a, a toy's point of view. Um, what was the most I, I surprising ready. thing you saw at the show? Oh, that's a good question. I was like dog lady. Um, so, there's a lady who's there all the, every year um who does a has a stand and, and she brings dogs that are very well trained and she teaches you how to do those those photographs where the dog is looks like he's trying to lick the camera and stuff like that and she does all these <laughs> demos and of course what she's doing is putting like peanut butter or something on a sheet of perspex and and the and the dog is going huh? <laughs> like that yeah so yeah to, to try and lick it off uh so she's always good she's always good fun seeing the dogs and they're so well trained so well behaved the dog so so that's fun what was the most surprising thing? I don't know. Mm. I might have to come back to you on that one. <laughs> Do you feel, did you feel that there's any kind of overall industry movement towards some technology um, that we've seen that in the past? You know what I mean? Whether, whether it's formatting, whether it's, it's chip size, uh, ISO. Mega so pin. the I'm... listeners are going to hate me for saying this, but the industry shift is towards the use of AI. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, no, surprise, no surprise here. The right? thing is, this is a very consumer-focused trade show. So it's about showing cameras, showing solutions, things that people can use. Yeah. So yeah. I think the, the innovation part has already happened at that point uh, when they sell them. So I... I don't know. But then, no, so, so there are lots of stuff on AI. So so um, Adobe had a, a big stand. They were doing lots of demos, and it was all about the AI componentry in, in their product set, and not just Photoshop or Lightroom, you know, across the board. Um, because there's a, there, there's quite a lot of video stuff, you know, stuff there as well. Um, and uh, then Luminar had a stand there, only a smallish one, uh, but of course Luminar editing is all about the AI built into it um even um a company i forget the name but they 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 were selling webcams and they were like the webcam follows you around and it's like so, so think like um yeah on a on little automated gimbal and it will follow you and you can make yeah you know these days you can make signs with your hands and then the camera reads that as an instruction to do something different 
But even now, it's, like, it's all about the AI. I was like, I don't care about the how it does it. What does it? What does it do? Right? But and the, how good? And, and what can it do for me? I don't. Don't. Everything. AI sells. AI. They put. It's they like, they used to put blockchain on things, and now that has been replaced by AI. And, yeah, and blockchain doesn't even have to have, dot com. Right? Doesn't doesn't even have to have AI in it. It's just important to have it on it. Yes, yeah. indeed. So so th- th- I think that would probably be my my thing of. Uh, uh, of what's the trend there there weren't any trends i mean you know dro- drones are just you know normal now no the, the drones are not a trend anymore um too annoying <laughs> yeah action cameras are not a trend anymore i mean they're all there right insta 360 had a stand and um I don't, i'm not sure if i saw a dji stand this year no, normally dji's have a have a stand there uh, the other thing with the, um uh, perhaps really interesting is the number of third party lens manufacturers so Lauer there, Lauer, Lauer, I can never pronounce that. They had some really great stuff. Siri, the, the, the guys that make both anamorphic and normal lenses, they were there. And so there, there was quite a lot. And, and Yong Nuo, you know, not long since they were the cheapest of the Chinese That's brands. That's all the Chinese brands you're just mm-hmm. listing yeah. there. It's Probably so made of like, one and, factory makes them all. They're, they're, but they're all, do you know what? They're all now starting to bring out really well-built auto-focusing lenses. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and that's new because you know a lot of those th- those companies had re- you know, um, I mean, I mean, you can so, some of them you know are, are, are better have produced better quality than others. Perhaps I don't think anybody's going to say that Lauer don't make good quality lenses because they do, right? And uh, but they, they, they even they're starting to bring out autofocus lenses now. There was even Anything? one stand I walked past, very small, with a couple of a couple of I, I'm assuming. Chinese uh, people on it, and they literally had a, a, a cardboard sign written in marker pen that said, "We are looking for distributors for our product," and they sort of nailed that to their stand. <laughs> uh, it, it, how was the iPhone adjacent um, component of the show? Like, turn your iPhone. You mean, you mean so accessories? Accessories I for did, iPhone yeah, exactly. yeah, So that's, that's interesting. So uh, lenses one I uh, one I saw which I really liked actually when I saw it was um uh, snap grip are they called snap grip and they, they they use a magnet they have like a rubberized grip and they I ha- use I the, have the mag safe they I, were there that was I own that um it's terrific it's fantastic because it'll also mm. charge your charge your phone as you go yeah. there's no uh there's no issue with kind of connecting it you just Hit the MagSafe and on your buttons, do the work, and uh, it's a nice grip, and it's easy. There's there's nothing to do. I I got it when I was up shooting. Um, a because I needed a, something to charge it, and B it's just nice to be able to you know snap or take um, um, video um, yeah. with you know with one hand moving through. It's quite it's that's a, a product that I quite yeah. Like. It- um, I, I I was this close to buying one of those. Um, they they have the the basic grip, but then they do a kit which is like a tabletop tripod, which is also yeah, mag safe and uh, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I was very close. It, it, I think if the show they, they had a decent enough show deal, but I think if it had just been like an extra ten quid off or something, I probably would have gone. Yeah, yeah I, I, I remember. But I then forget. I went and bought the big expensive lens. So <laughs> oh yeah, well there. I, I remember I got it on some kind of deal, and it was not expensive. And I thought, wow, that's that's an amazing little piece uh, to have, and I use it. So. Yeah, no, it's it's a really nicely put together product. It feels nice in the hand, dead simple to use. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got a shutter button that works on bluetooth a nice grip and and not only that but as you said it charges your phone as you go because it's also you know it, 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 yeah. it works all through the magsafe so yeah good good product that i think now you now you're giving me remorse like well, it's not buyer's remorse it's, <laughs> it's my job it's not not <laughs> buyer's remorse feel bad. not yeah, not by it all, but it's reverse anyway, formal. Yes. No, delayed <laughs> formal. <laughs> delayed from it. Enough, anyway, enough about products. A- Adrian, just come exciting. over. Let's come do. over, and I'll lend it to you whenever you Thank, want. Yeah, I, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, I'll uh, put it on the shelf for me, right next to the Leica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th- there's another big thing I wanted to talk about, which I th- which which I thought was really cool, and is about f- actual photography. Right, so so you know, sort of switching gears here now, right? Although although the talk about toys is great. Um, what I went to see uh, a presentation of uh, and a panel discussion 
about a thing called felt photography. And felt as in the, the fabric or? It, 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 well, spelt the same way, but not the same thing. No. So, uh, it, it, yes, it's um, uh, felt as in feelings. Um, and the the presentation, so there was, it was a, a panel discussion, which which had um, some photographic artists and also some some people who are more uh, from the, the competition world, the photographic competition world. And the way that the, uh, the, the lady pitched this was that, um, you know, photo competitions are really, um, uh, you know, v very formulaic. They're looking for very specific things and they're often quite technical. We talked about that least, here. Yes. Yeah. Often quite technical. Felt photography has come about from the point of view of actually, wouldn't it be fantastic if you could curate and maybe even judge and assess photography? on the basis of how it makes you feel rather than how you know rather than particular technical characteristics and so the uh, you know there's a pat the, the presentation the panel discussion about how it is that they've done this you know they do uh, they do open calls for curation uh, and publish uh, yeah exhibitions uh, one of their exhibitions actually had been printed and was on display in the exhibition hall um, and yeah, the discussion was along the lines of, uh, they opened the panel discussion with a lady who was a, a judge. Um, she, she, you know, had been a judge of phot photographic competitions for, for many years, I think she'd said. And, uh, she said, you know, often of course you, you have to apply the formula and the criteria and what have you. But she said, one of the things about felt photography, she said, it just was an amazing thing for her to be able to, to consider the art in a different way. Uh, and to and to uh, and to use it as a it's actually used in in part as as therapy um and so she said yeah that the, the conversation was things like well how does this make you feel how does you know not just in your brain and what does it make you think about but how does it make your body feel when you see uh, and and study a particular image and you know what does that do you know what does that do then your how your body feels what does that do to your state of mind what questions does the 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 photograph raise for you or what what thoughts does it prompt or what feelings does it prompt and I was, I was just sat there and I was listening I was quite like wrapped in attention yeah like yeah uh, uh, you know very attentive to this talk um, I have to say I'm wrapped listening to you talk about it I think this it, is fantastic and and a great way to experience photography it, it it was and and uh it, and it just really made me think it's like oh yeah this is you know when you hear something this makes so much more sense than the way we usually do things it was one of those moments you know it was like why yeah it shouldn't be a a numbers game it shouldn't be all about whether you follow the rules or not um it, i think that's a, it provokes a even a greater question about art in general um art criticism analysis uh previews, um, curators talking about the work before one has a chance to digest it and feel mm -hmm. what they feel or what one feels. So um, just drawing attention to that, I think, is a, a extremely important way for us to look at all kinds of images. But specifically with photography, we don't talk enough about it. You know, we talk a lot about decisive moment. Compositional, minimalism, complexity, texture, light, but we we rarely talk about oh the mood, the feeling of it, and uh, which and which is right. arguably what photography is about. It's the point. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I sat there thinking, this is so, this, this just really feels right. You know, it, it really feels like what it should be all about, right? Um, and yeah, it, and of course, yeah, in sharp contrast to all the stuff we've just been talking about about you know the the equipment and the toys and the fun which all of which is great fun as well yeah it's uh, but but having you know wandering around this show floor full of of uh really cool stuff and then walking into this presentation theater area where the, this panel discussion was you know was, was held uh i so, oh yeah this you know um but it, may, it just made a lot of sense and um and and uh the, the, the presenter, um, her name is Kat, Ma Ma I don't know how to pronounce the surname, Mahale, I think. Um, she spoke very eloquently about her own personal experiences 
um and and how photography had been in some ways therapy for her um yeah and and it helped her through some hard times uh yeah as a personally not just hard times as an artist but yeah personal hard times and uh yeah so it was it was really interesting um and it was interesting to see as well they'd asked the artists on the panel um they they'd asked them for for uh, one of their photographs that was in the current curated exhibition set um and they asked the other artist to comment on them live in as part of the panel discussion so they'd put a photo up on the screen it was taken by one of the artists and then then they give the microphone and it's like okay tell me what does this make you feel which I can imagine must be really daunting to do that as a panel discussion in in public but, well, but it was yeah. really effective it was really effective though to to communicate the ideas behind it interesting question about when one takes a picture the moment that drives you to actually press the shutter button you obviously have a feeling of that moment, however you do it, whether it's messy, formal, whatever composition, however you, you approach it, that motivation. Is that, the motive, is that the same as presentation of that same image in terms of feeling? Even for the photographer themselves, when you look at it, it's very different. Yes. And, and, and the people who look at it may have a completely different feeling, deep feeling, about an image you took with a very different feeling. And that's a very interesting conversation, I think, between mm -hmm. photographers and those who experience the prints and, and trying to figure out what that, what that kind of blend, what that zone is, what that communication style is in terms of the emotion. Of For me, the that's the that's the essence <clears throat> of the whole photography thing is the 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 being able to to anticipate what the recipient will go through when they look at the picture that you're taking at this moment. So for me, that anticipation that's 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 the thing that takes I don't know forever to learn and to get right. I think it's but funny it, i don't feel that when i take a picture you don't for, for me i just connect with the um, no no i'm not saying I, I do have that feeling i don't i'm not saying i have that feeling i'm, I'm saying i can anticipate what might happen in the recipient or yeah. th that's that's my goal at least it would be really it'd be what would have been really interesting but they they didn't have time for because these things are you know time slots and what have you yeah you know, sure. when, when they're doing them in the show um so they did the up so the artist who had who had made the, the image listened into the the reaction if you like and it wasn't a first reaction because this is a curated set it's been yeah everybody had seen each other's photo um but the yeah what they what you didn't get the chance to do live in the moment was the dialogue between the artist and the viewers because i would have loved to have yeah, n not because I want the artist to stand up and have an artist tantrum and say, that's not what I meant at all, and storm off the stage, although <laughs> that would have been amusing if it had happened. But but no, but just because it was that deeper moment, right? Because, you know, people were sharing something personal. It was showing how the thing made them feel. And it's, and it would have been lovely to go and see all that. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that may, you know, maybe we do um, a podcast on photography, imagery, and emotion. I think that would be an interesting discussion. You know, I think it's it's in the purview, of course, when we work in film uh, with actors and trying to capture, especially from a director's point of view, where you have multiple actors and you're you're really focused on the intention of bringing out an emotive value that connects with the audience and that helps in character and story, etc. And one works hard at making sure that that's in a way invisible. So it's not what we would call indicating or anticipating or pushing. Is like sometimes you see a, a movie with a very bland scene and they're going, let's pump up the, the music so hard to like tell people that this is an important emotion scene. And yet you're there going like, God is bombastic. To tell right? people what they <laughs> are supposed to feel. That's in that right, and, and so uh, that's that's on something that would not work uh, in film. Um, and so we, you know, uh, one of the director's jobs is to kind of very delicately maneuver the emotional um, expression of the 
actors, and you do this with performance adjustment, you do this with cutting, you do this with your composition, and of course, music and sound effects and all of that to bring up or diminish what the eventual feeling is. But photographs have that same power. I mean, we can look at, you know, and I think we've talked about images over the course of history that shocked us or appalled us or warmed us um, and even provoked social change. And so oh, yeah. that, that's v that, those are very, very important things. And, and I guess to rekindle the emotive value of taking a picture, being conscious of it, editing that picture to what end, and ultimately what the experience of looking at that picture. And what is that experience of looking at that picture on your phone? online, on a computer, on a wall, on a billboard. Uh, those are all very different experiences. Absolutely. Uh, it, uh, and for, uh, that's, that's close to the, the, the conclusion of what I was going to say to, 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 this, um, to this topic for me, was after uh, seeing the, the panel discussion, I went back and found the exhibition as it was being displayed uh, it, you know, uh, there. Um, terrible conditions right a noisy exhibition floor horrible lighting you know um uh, but i went back and i thought okay i'm gonna go back and do this i'm gonna i'm gonna go and look at this collection of photographs and, and attempt this and it, to, because the because the uh the surroundings were not exactly conducive um it was it was a bit tricky but i was able to 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 stop and consider and uh, how these images made me feel in a way that i you know i had seen them previously earlier in the day or whatever or the day before but i, I, I just went oh yeah yeah fine and walked past them and not really given them their due and so actually it was a really good wake-up call for me as well that you know you, it it's worth putting the effort in you know to to really under to just explore how the, the the photographs make you feel and what they make you think about stuff. But it's worth spending time with these images, you know. So that was a, that was a good a good wake up call for me. Awesome, wonderful. Anything else from the photography show? So one one more thing, but it's not a big discussion for it's not a big topic for discussion, but it's just a lot of fun. So um, there's a picture in our shared uh, album of what probably looks to to you both uh, like a motorbike and to be honest at first glance i was like why have they brought a motorbike into the, into the show floor this doesn't make any sense and i thought well hang on a minute it doesn't seem to have an engine or anything like that so this is called the manfrotto avenger <laughs> right and i believe avenger is actually a, a <clears throat> product that manfrotto sells it's like i don't know it's a line of c stands or something <laughs> it looks like, a, yeah. like that um and um, but this is a motorbike, like full size motorbike that's made entirely out of Manfrotto grip. Yeah, this this is the kind of thing that grips get together, drink a whole lot, and that's go, how this came to be, yeah, right? That's what it feels <laughs> like to me. I could just see the grips on any number of shows that I do, you know, going like, I got an idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the uh, yeah the spokes on the wheels. I think that the, I mean there were actual tires on this thing. Obviously, they're not yeah Manfrotto products. Not Manfrotto tires. And the rim of the no. wheels. I'm not sure where they come from. But the spokes of the wheels are adjustable. You know, um, they're not magic <laughs> arms, but they're adjustable arms of some sort. Um, and then you know all the foot pedals are things like the handles from super clamps and stuff, like, and the handlebars and the brake. Yeah, they're all different types of clamps. The headlights are the, the and, and the, yeah. the speedo for definitely the drunken grips. Are, are the suckers that you get for when you put stuff on windows on, on glass, so yeah, the, the the vacuum suckers. The forks are made out of C stands. Um, there's just there's just all sorts of goodies <laughs> on this thing. Oh, if you look yeah. at the rear lights, Chris, they 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 look like red light rear red lights on the back of this motorbike. But they're actually those those funny, strange, drilled red balls that Manfrotto sell. I've never figured out for the life in all the years I've known of them as a product. I've never actually figured out what the hell they're for. But they, there's just all sorts of really, really fun stuff. And I thought, yeah, that's awesome. I spent ages looking at it. There's a little sign that by the bottom of it said, "Can you guess how many pieces of Manfrotto <laughs> equipment have been used to make this bike?" 
Well, they, but, they certainly got some attention with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, it was really well, and it was really well done when you see it, like, you know, uh, up close. It was horribly difficult to take a photo of because it's practically see through because there's so many gaps in it. And the surrounding area was just so busy. The shot right. I've taken of it is absolutely horrendous, but it was the best angle I could find. <laughs> All right. So that's a bit of fun. That sounds like a bit of fun. So, the photography show, coming up again next year, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be back to every year now. Um, uh, they haven't announced next year's one, but I'm imagining it will be in March. So they, they like the springtime for that show. One of these days I'll make it there. I'm, I'm kind of miss, I kind of miss Photokina. now, you know? It's been, uh, I, I, I used to be there and then it just disappeared one day and it's like, eh, okay. So. Maybe we should organize a, a TFOP something or well, a, uh, next, year, it, next year, next year, Chris, year, yeah. uh, in, in Berlin in May, um, there, we will be doing at Kraftwerk there in Berlin, we'll be doing a very big AI show inviting all manner of artists from all oh, over the I'll world be there. there. And, and it will be quite something. The first of its kind, really like a free, like freeze, you know, those art shows and whatnot. <laughs> And it's being organized by, uh, by friends of mine, and I'll be there. That um, sounds a good one. Get fun, the dates yeah. as soon as you can. I'll, I'll come over for that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, be really fun. Sounds cool. Okay. So let's move on to the picks of the week. I brought us one. Um, uh, the thing I talked about earlier. The Oops, I have to switch. To oh, the... that's the man photo bike again. That's Browser, <laughs> here we go. Um, yeah. The Canon satellite. Okay, so this is the thing that came, I came across just a few days ago. Um, and Canon has already uh, launched their second microsatellite into space. Um, and this one is there for taking pictures of our planet and some pictures of space. Um, they have... Um, a PowerShot 110 on it for wide-angle stuff and a 5D, no, not a 5D, an R5 um, with a telescope for pictures of the Earth. And that thing just started sending pictures back to Earth. So Did, did it launch from a, uh, from a large spaceship? Or was it one of these micro-satellites that you literally toss out of a No, no, no. What... <laughs> I I think I think I don't know exactly, but but there's like um, like SpaceX, for example, does these what they call ride share missions, where they they have like twenty, thirty, or more microsatellites on board and uh, release them up there. So possibly one of those, because that's that's relatively affordable to what it would have cost. I don't oh. know twenty years ago. So that's why I ask. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I guess it's probably one of those. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, it just feels. I don't know exactly why they're doing this, but of course they get visibility. They get to show that their stuff works, like like their consumer stuff works in space. Um, I may, maybe there's a bit of Hasselblad envy from 50 years ago, possibly. So. Um, it's a good time, I think, for camera manufacturers to think about space. I mean, we are going back to the moon in a few years, aren't we, and stuff like that. So. Oh, and, and there's there's plenty of projects of, of, of Earth observation stuff up there now by private companies doing, like, I don't know, watching climate-related things and uh, and so on. So, yeah, I think that might be a, that might be an interesting market, possibly. All right, Adrian, you brought us a camera. I did a vintage digital camera, right? So, and there's re so I my pick of the week today is the Olympus Penlight EPL three, first released I think in 2011. At least that's the date I found on DP Review. Um, and why? Why you might ask? Is this my pick of the week? Well, it's my pick of the week because I've just been gifted one. No, really, I have. My father-in-law just gave me this. Um, it was one that he's had, I think, since they were first new, uh, but hasn't used in many years. He said, I keep, keep, he said I keep meaning to give you this. So I now, I now have an Olympus uh, EPL, well, I can't do it, I can't do it, EPL3. Um, this, I'm, I've been really intrigued um, about buying a Micro Four Thirds camera for some time. 
um you'll you'll know of course that i really love my olympus tough camera and i really love the the art filter the black the grainy black and white art filter in that but of course the thing that that camera finds very challenging is it's got a very small sensor whereas this camera has a micro four thirds sensor and has the grainy black and white art filter in it so i am intrigued to see what i can do here whether i could yeah you know, whether it's uh, uh is it is it is it really old fashioned image quality because it's well, you know, 13 years old at this point or is it going to take my graphic photography to a new level the the specs don't don't look too bad i mean it has 12 megapixels um seems to have a, a decently fast autofocus yeah it, it shoots even shoots 1080 1080 movies so yeah, I probably won't use it for that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the iPhone is better. <laughs> yeah, the iPhone right. 4 is probably better, but yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. And last but not least, Jeremiah, you brought us a uh, region Another project. Another inspiration of a photographer, Catherine Opie. Um, she's a favorite and, and, and well worth just investigating her work. It, it's lyrical, beautiful, well-considered, uh, worth a, a deep dive, um, both her social photography and her landscape. Um, there's a big show here going on, has been at Reagan Project. Um, she's a dazzler, really, really great photographer, and one that I just thought, if people are not aware of her, they should be. The photos on this website also show very very um clearly how the room around exhibitions um influences your perception of it because this is this looks like sure her photography yeah. looks like photography that needs space and it's getting space there so yeah though her work i have i have a, a book on her or by her and and uh, again the the image Images have uh, a beautiful, provocative uh, air to it. They make you feel something. Um, but um, again, worth mm. a dive. Very good. good. I'm, yeah, I'm very intrigued about the presentation here, the surroundings. Yeah. Anyway, very cool. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, Canon VR felt photography still misleading title for me <laughs> it is a bit yeah like a, yeah i thought i thought it would be like those instagram uh posts of people it's it's a product shop right? yeah. yeah i thought <laughs> it, it, yes it could but, but but yeah when you dive into it well well worth understanding and giving a go all right so Definitely. that was it I'll, I'll i'll try to find my my tripods and things and see if i can buy can build a little uh tricycle or something of them um so build a t-fop robot Chris. That's the t-fop t robot yeah i'll do my best so this was it for this week's episode we'll be back soon with more until then you can find us at thefuturephotography.com see you guys soon take care and bye 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 you've been listening to the future of photography Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.